Good morning. This is Pastor Jason Bratcher, and welcome to Hartford Baptist Church. We're glad that you've decided to join us today in our time of worship unto Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through singing of praise, sharing our tithes and our offerings, and the reading and preaching of the God-breathed Word of God. We invite you to come to our facility at 415 Liberty Street, Hartford, Kentucky, next to the Community Center. Our traditional service starts at 9 a.m., Blessed Academy, Sunday School, at 1015 a.m., and our contemporary service starts at 1115 a.m. The Kingdom Kids Ministry, or Children's Church, as well as our nursery is provided in our 1115 a.m. service. The registration table for those ministries is in our education wing and begins at 11 a.m. At Hartford Baptist Church, we're a community of grace, serving a community of needs. May God bless you through the services here today. Come to worship. How great is our God? Has it been good to you this week? Has he been good to you this week? Amen. All right. Let's get up and sing. How great is our God? The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice chains. He breaks all chains. That's what we're going to sing next. Chain breaker. 
and that is not it. <clears throat> Keep working. There we are. All right, here we go. Chain breaker.
us. There is, there is a giant maybe before you. And that giant may come in many, many forms. It might come in, in, in financial instability. It may come in, in health problems. It may come in relational problems. It may come in the form of, of, of fear, of anger even at God. Maybe, maybe you, you've cried out to God to give you something and he hasn't granted you that yet. Maybe you have some sort of affliction or addiction or dependency. But all those things, all those things that remain as that giant in front of you will fall, ladies and gentlemen, at the name of Jesus. That's the power that we have. Do you believe that this morning? Then let's sing it again. Let's sing it like we mean it. Here we go. We've got the power.
give to God by enjoying what he has given me, okay? I mean, do you really think he expects something back? Now, I know there's a lot of people at church that would not understand this line of reasoning. That's why, just to make things simple and not to cause any controversy, I like to carry what I call the little empty envelope, all right? You see, when the plate gets passed, I bloop, put it in there like that. The deacon's counting the money. They only know me as the crazy empty envelope guy, but the people sitting around me, clueless. <laughs> I win, they win, God wins. No one gets hurt because no one knows. God knows. Huh? Let me ask you a question, huh? How's your mutual fund? Hey, for that matter, how's all your funds? Ha has the fund left your funds, huh? Has your do re taken a W-A-L-K, huh? <laughs> what if I told you that I knew about an investment you could make that the return would be mind-boggling? And, 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 it's, and it's promised, it's guaranteed. I know what you're saying, there's no guarantees. This one's guaranteed, okay? Malachi 3.10. So what it says in the Old Testament. It says, test me, give to God, and he will give you back. It goes like this. I give this, he gives this. I give this, he gives this. I give this. Up right up there. He keeps giving. I can't outgive God. How crazy is that? <laughs> Do I love him? Sure, whatever. I'm just saying, if you give, he gives back. <laughs> I tithe. But just not like in the form of a 10% check, per se. Let me tell you what I mean. When I go to church on a Sunday morning, they're selling donuts. I buy some. Boom. That's a tithe. When my whole Sunday school class wants donuts, and I, out of the goodness of my heart, buy a whole bunch for the Sunday school class, boom. That's another tithe. But it's not about me spending money. It's about the smile on people's faces. That, my friends, is tithe enough for me. Case in point, the church was having date nights where we can take our spouse out for an evening, and they were charging $25 for child care. Boom shakalaka tithe. But I'll tell you what the biggest tithe was. When I spent over $100 on our meal, and my wife was grinning ear to ear, that, my friends, a tithe. I, I would like to give. I would, okay? But everything right now is just crazy. I mean, just crazy, you know? I mean, not normal crazy, really crazy, you know? And if after I paid my bills and took care of the things that I need and want, then I would, I would consider giving something. But... Not, now it's crazy. We're, we're, we're going to give later. We've already talked about it. I mean, down the road, we'll be crazy givers. But right now, it's just crazy. Yeah, I have money. That's a fact. But you know what? It's a hard thing between me and the Lord and the pastor because he needs to know what I'm giving now that we have this little building campaign going on, if you know what I'm saying. And pastor, I'd give a little bit more. I'd give a little something, something if you'd have that music minister sing a couple more hymns now and then, huh? Hey, what's this? Watch this. Is that a Benjamin? I think it is. Benji likes him. Come on, you want it? Ah, come on, Pastor, do what I say, huh? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Oh, in my life, Lord, be glorified in me. I put money in the plate. Wait, wait, wait. Look what I have here. I hope it doesn't interfere. But that everyone can hear how I give with cheer. That everyone could be like me. So guess what I'm talking about today? Tithing. We're going to talk about tithing. Boy, I tell you what, that's, uh, that's one word that most pastors don't like to hear or talk about. Because why? Because the congregation don't want to hear about it. That's why. That's why I've entitled today's sermon, Tithe, the four-letter word of the church. The four-letter word of the church. It's almost like cursing inside the church to talk about tithing. Well, we've seen some examples there in that uh, video about tithing. we got those that think that uh, whatever they give to the church is a tithe. You know, I had, I mentioned this in the first service, as uh, two churches ago, three churches ago, I had a deacon in the church, yeah, a deacon in the church, that he would give canned goods to the, to the uh, 
food bank there at the church. And when he did, he would take the receipt and sign on the back of it his name and put tithe and throw that into the offering plate. Guys, that ain't tithing. That's offering. That's not tithing. That is offering. And uh, he's not a deacon there anymore. Praise the Lord for that. But anyway... We want to talk about tithing this morning. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. That's where we're going to start. We're going to be in a couple of different places this morning. But you know, it is a hard topic to discuss in the church is tithing. But most of the time, I hate preaching on tithing. Right now at Hartford Baptist Church, it's a must. We've got a lot of ministries going at Hartford Baptist Church. And they are productive for the kingdom of God. And the bad thing about that is it takes funds to do it. So today we're going to be talking about tithing as we promote next Sunday, July the 1st. We're calling it our celebration offering. Now, let me describe that to you just a minute. I said an offering. It will be taken up at the end of both of our services, the 9 a.m. and the 11.15, not to do anything with our regular tithes collection that we take up at the beginning. So this, what we're taking next week, is asked of, as an offering, not your tithe. We've set a goal of $20,000 to try to meet in this. And you say, wow, that's a lofty goal. That's a big goal. But let me tell you where I'm at. I serve a lofty and a big God. And He is capable. He is capable of doing whatever we put our faith in Him to do. So we're, yes, that's a lofty go. But I tell you what, we've got a lot of ministries, as I said, going on in our church. A lot of things that are going on. And it takes money to make those things happen. So today I'm going to be talking about tithing. If you would stay with me as we honor the reading of God's Word this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 8 and 9. I'm not saying this as a command. Rather, by the means of the diligence of others, I am testing the genuineness of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although he was rich for your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. You going to go to 10? Want everybody to see it? Maybe the Bible just quit working. There we go. Now I'm giving an opinion on this because it is profitable for you who a year ago began not only to do something but also to desire it. I know I said eight and nine. I'm sorry. Thank you for the ten. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, in a time of worship through song, through a time of worship through the reading of your word, and also, Lord, is a time of worship through giving of our tithes and offerings. Lord, I pray this morning that your word not go out void. Lord, I pray this morning that you would begin to work on the hearts, minds, and souls of each of us here this morning. Lord, and that your word would dwell within us. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So, you hear the word tithe. We're talking about a tenth. A tenth of your income. A tenth of your assets. And when we talk about that, that's when it gets messy, doesn't it? That's when nobody wants to talk to you anymore. We start talking about giving this or giving that or let us have. And it brings up a question. Unless you were raised in the church, and even some that are raised in the church have this question. Do I need to tithe? Do I need to tithe? And, and quite frankly, that's a fair question. And it's a fair question that needs to be asked. Because not every day do you go to an organization or to someone, they ask you for 10% of your assets. It's a good question. Do I need to tithe? Well, we're going to start looking at that. First of all, we're going to look at this first scripture we read. We're going to go to verse 8. And in verse 8 there we see he's talking about stewardship and giving. But see, Paul doesn't command. He doesn't command these Corinthians here to give. He doesn't put it out as a command at all. He even says, I'm not saying this is a command. He puts it out there, rather by means of diligence 
of others, I am testing the genuineness of your love. You know, if giving is forced or if giving is coerced, it doesn't benefit anything, does it? It doesn't please God. So this morning, let me just make this statement. As you came in here this morning, if you came to church today because this is where I'm supposed to be and this is what is required of me and people are expecting me to be here this morning, let me tell you something. God's not getting any glory for that. We should be here in this worship service this morning because we want to give glory to God. We want to worship Him and His influence in our lives. And the same thing goes for those offering plates that passed a while ago. If you wrote a check saying, man, I, just, I need to do this. Instead of saying, God, I want to bless you through my tithes. I want to worship you through my tithes and give it of a cheerful and willing heart. Let me tell you something. Those monies mean nothing. They mean nothing. Don't misunderstand me. Yes, this church needs the funds. But I tell you what this church does not need. We do not need the funds that are given begrudgedly. If you're not giving them in, in a, a willing and a cheerful act so that they're worship unto God, then really they're almost a curse to the church. So yes, we're required. It's a command. We're going to talk about that in a minute. A command from God to give a tenth, to give a tithe. But as Paul says here, I'm not commanding you to do this. I'm not coercing you to do this. I'm not forcing you to do this. This should be something that you do out of the cheerfulness of your heart. Because see, God is only pleased when gifts are given that way. Not because we have to. He blesses those who with their gifts bless others. Now your tithes and offerings that you give to Hartford Baptist Church, they are not gifts to Hartford Baptist Church. They are tools to use in the ministries of Jesus Christ through the ministries of Hartford Baptist Church. And there are those that will say, hey, I don't agree, I don't like that ministry over there, so I'm not going to give as much money this week. Let me tell you something, all you're doing there is you are reflecting Satan. And not only that, but you are hurting the family of God. Because let me tell you, there's not a ministry that's going at Hartford Baptist Church right now that God isn't seeing results for the kingdom for. There's not one. Every ministry that we have going here, Kingdom Kids, Answers for Kids, the, C, uh, the Children in Action that will be starting back up in August, uh, the Wednesday night adult Bible studies, the vacation Bible schools, all these things, our worship services, our Sunday school services, we're seeing those ministries serving God and we're seeing results. Had a baptism last week after vacation Bible school. We're seeing people join the church. We're seeing things happen. We're seeing the community recognizing the church for who we are. That is what you give your tithes and offerings for. It's not to exalt yourself and you're not giving them to this facility. You're giving them in the name of Jesus Christ willingly, hopefully, cheerfully, hopefully, to see the ministry of Jesus Christ go forth. You see, giving's got to be based on two things. Number one, it must be based on the love for Jesus Christ who has commanded us to do what? Go into all the world to reach them, help people, see them, uh, to go into all the world. We just preached about this a couple of weeks ago. Go ye therefore teaching, preaching, and baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we're giving our tithes for. So that we can have the finances to make those things possible. Whether it's right here in our community, whether it's overseas and missions, all those things are important. But we got to have the love for the Lord Jesus Christ in our heart, or all the, we can give all the money in the world. But if it's not with a cheerful heart for God, it really goes void. It goes void. Second thing is we got to be. It's got to be giving. It's got to be based on the example of those who give sacrificially. Uh, let, let me 
re-say that word, sacrificially. Sacrificially. That means we give till it hurts. <laughs> That's probably not the best definition, but sometimes it does. Sacrificial giving means giving when you don't know how you're going to give. No, I'm not asking you to go empty your bank account and put it in our offering plate because God wants everything you got. That's not what I said. Being sacrificial. Sacrificial. What I mean by that is, at the end of the week, I look and see what I got left and I give God a portion of it. That's not tithing and offering. My God is better than the bottom half of what I have. My God is worth the top half when I get it. He's the top. Not what's left on the bottom. You know, I used this example in the first service. I use it again in the second service. I was talking to a, a pastor friend of mine, a local pastor. And, uh, and we were talking, of course, you know when pastors get together, we end up talking about money. I mean, it's usually the way it goes. Because we're all trying to figure out how to... Every dollar, you know, make it work for the Lord. Anyway, we were talking. He said he had one gentleman said uh, he was he was counseling them on on a new membership, and we talked about tithing. And uh, he says, "Well, he said that's something that I think I'll eventually get to, and I need to work and strive for that." And you know, and, and in a, in a manner, I can understand that. But this is what he told that man, and, and it really rang true to me. He said. Well, I understand what you're saying there, he said, but if that's true, then everything about God could be in the same category. So, when I, me and my wife, I'm never going to attain fullness in God till, till I die and go to heaven. So then I guess I can fool around on my wife and commit adultery until I die and everything's okay. He said, no, you can't. No, no. I said, he said, well, what's the difference? If you're not going to give all that God's required of you in your tithes and offerings, then do I have to give all that I have to my wife? He said, well, that's a commandment. He said, well, that's so is tithing. There's no difference. Do I give a little bit in this area and a little bit in that area? Or do I give everything God has required for me in every area of my life? You know, that hit home to me. It makes sense to me. You've got to give everything God requires to Him in every area. And guess what? That means finances and assets. Finances and assets. Love. I keep saying that. We've got to give it. we got to give it to the love of Jesus Christ. We've got to show cheerful giving for the love of Jesus Christ. Love. Love is a proven action. I love my wife. I can tell her every day I love her, and I do. But until I put that love into action, it's not really proven, is it? Until I do an act to show her that. Until I do something. And we all know that love is not a, uh, a noun. Love is a verb. It shows action. So for us to say we love God, we've got to put that into action. It's got to be demonstrated. It's got to be put into words of deeds and compassion and giving. Love demands sacrificial giving. I say I love my wife. I sacrificially give to her. She sacrificially gives to me. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, let's give you an example. I don't have a separate checkbook. She doesn't have a separate checkbook. Everything we have is ours. I don't have a truck and she doesn't have a car. We've got vehicles. We share. I sacrifice. Sacrifice. She sacrifices. Those are just material things. But we all relate to those things. We share those things together. It's an act of sacrificial giving for one another. We are to sacrifice things in our tithes of our offerings of money and assets to the Lord. It should be a sacrifice because they're not just yours. God gave them to you. God gave them to you. And he requires a portion of that back. Let me just clear something up. God doesn't need your money. Okay? He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your checking account. He doesn't need your whatever. He don't need it. 
You know, I made this comment this morning. Jesus Christ, all through the Bible, it doesn't say anywhere where he earned a dime, but God took care of him. Right? He never worked for anything money-wise. We didn't see any of that. He doesn't need our money. What he wants is your obedience and your love. That's what the tithe is for. To give back unto him with a cheerful heart. With willingness to give it back to him. And he set the perfect example for us. In those scriptures we read this morning, verse 9, talks about the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ demonstrates not only that we are to give, but how we are to give. Because you see, the Lord Jesus Christ was rich. He was rich. He was the Son of God. He possessed the very nature and being of the fullness of God. I don't know about you, but to me, that's rich. That's rich. He dwelt in the light that no man can even look upon. That's how rich he was. He possessed everything that was good, everything that was perfect. He had all the worship, all the adoration of all the heavenly beings that there was. They worshipped him every day. And he was a part of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He was rich. He had everything that meant anything in this universe. Then the Lord Jesus Christ became poor. He gave it all. He requires for me and you the tithe, the 10%. But let me tell you, he gave it all. And he expects us to give our 10 percent, our tithe, our tenth to him with the same heart, with the same sacrificial willingness that he gave his all to us. The incarnation of Jesus Christ is what he gave to us. He came from deity to humanity. He came from the highest point to the lowest creature for you and me. He was God. He became a humble man. He was who he was is the Lord. And he took flesh and blood. He who was the holy God took the place of the lowest. He who was the sovereign Lord became the rejected. The one that was perfect became the sacrifice for sin. The one that was life became the substitute for our death. He gave it all. He gave us the perfect example of how to give. Of how to give. He gave it all. The point is, since Christ willingly sacrificed so much to help us, that we ought to, we ought to sacrifice to help those that are in need. You say, well, I thought we were talking about tithing. That's exactly what we're talking about. When you give tithe to this church, that money goes to help those in need. Whether it be through the answers on Wednesday night, whether it's through the children in action on Sunday nights, whether it's through the preaching of God's Word on Sunday morning, whether it's through the Gospel Project of Blessed Academy, whether it's through a youth excursion, whether it's through youth camps, whether it's through us in the community serving at the OC Pantry, wherever it's at, when you give of that, we are serving in the ministries of the needs of people. I don't know if you know our motto for sure, but it says this, we are a community of grace suffering a community of, or serving a community of needs. We are a community of grace serving a community of needs. How do we do that? Through our loving obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ through our tithes and offerings. Now, I said tithes and offerings. Tithes is one-tenth. Offering is above. So let me just clarify that for a minute. Tithes. That's what we're required to give. That's what we give. Offerings. That's anything we can do sacrificially above and beyond. Now, let me clear up what we're doing next Sunday. Next Sunday, July the 1st, we're having our celebration uh, offering. 
offering, not tithe. Celebration offering. We'll take up our tithes in regular time. But what we do with that has got nothing to do with your tithes to the church. This is an offering. A sacrificial love offering to the Lord. We will conclude our service. We're going to partake in communion together. We're going to pray together. Then we're going to worship through giving an offering to the Lord. Yeah, we've made an offering of a goal of $20,000. Because there's things this church needs to continue to do ministry. In my opinion, one of the things we need is another van so we can continue to do our ministries. Now, I'm not saying that's what the $20,000 is for, but that's something I'm praying about the Lord gives us. We need it. We need transport. Wednesday night, we had over 30 kids upstairs. This week, we're going to have even more than that. Sunday mornings, we could run two vans and pick up kids from all over the county. Just asked a while ago if I could go to Rosine's Wednesday night. I said, absolutely. I'll be there. I don't know how. We're going to. We're going to pick up kids. We're going to bring them here. Pick up adults. We're going to bring them here. Why? Because we're going to teach them about Jesus Christ. We want to see souls saved. We want to see lives changed. We want to see the kingdom added to. That's why it takes finances. That's why we tithe. That's why we give offerings. So, back to our question. Are Christians required to tithe? Well, I feel like today I need to give you both sides of that. To be fair. Christians are commanded to tithe. The tithe began in the Old Testament. And it was carried on by Jesus Christ. First, the argument is made that the requirement to tithe was made before the Mosaic Covenant. Okay? And the reason I bring that up is through the Mosaic Covenant. That's the Old Testament. We get to the New Testament. We've got Jesus Christ. We've got the New Covenant. So a lot of people would say that with the New Covenant, the Old Covenant's gone. Me, I don't agree with that. I think the New Covenant just adds to the Old Covenant. But still, there's some that have that mindset. If we do that, we go back to Genesis chapter 14 when we see Abraham make a, a commitment to God to give his tithe. We go to uh, Genesis chapter 28. We see Jacob make a commitment to God to give the tithe, the first of everything. So we see the tithe has now been precedented before the Mosaic Law. Even if you say the Mosaic Law is gone, the tithe is a precedent. It's a precedent for God's people. We go to Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, we see Jesus Christ. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You pay a tenth of mint, dill, and cumin, yet you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. These things should be done, listen to this, these things should be done without neglecting the others. Jesus Christ there affirms He's affirming the tithe. Yes, that needs to be done, but don't forget about these other things too. Jesus affirms the tithe. We go to the New Testament. The word tithe is not used. It's not there. In the New Testament, the word tithe is not there. Now, we are, in the New Testament, commanded to give generously. So we see in Genesis 14, Abraham, Genesis 28, Jacob, as they institute the tithe, the first tenth of everything to God. Now, we don't know that they kept continually doing that. We don't know that. We know that Jesus refers back to it there in Matthew 23, 23 and says that even though you're doing that, so they're still doing it there, Jesus confirms that we are to give a tithe. We are to give a 10% there in Matthew 23, 23 among the other things. So we see these things there. So still, here's the, here's the question. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do as they come to start getting us ready for worship. What am I supposed to do? I've put all these things out there to you today. If you've noticed, I haven't told you, I've not commanded you, or I've not forced you, I'm not coercing you to tithe. I'm telling you that it's established in the Word of God. Jesus confirmed it. And that's how we survive. That's how we survive. 
Now, there are strengths and weaknesses to everything I told you there about the two ways. But here's what I got to say to you this morning. If you believe that you're commanded to tithe, or maybe you want to say give generously, I pray that you follow the Lord with a clear conscience. I pray that you follow the Lord with a clear conscience. Give generously, support the church, support the other causes. I can't stand here and tell you today that you've got to tithe. What I can tell you is what the Word of God tells me. It was established through Abraham, the father of the nations. He was continued by his lineage of Jacob and that Jesus recognized it in Matthew 23, 23 that it is a precedent to be hip upheld. But where would we be to talk about tithing if we didn't go to Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 10? I love the way it stop, starts. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. You ask, how do we rob you by not making the payments of 10% of the contributions? You are suffering under a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full 10% into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way. Lord says there, test me. He says, test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. Now he's not saying just because you write a check for 10% of your income that you're going to be blessed. Nothing's never going to happen to you. What he says is there... If you will cheerfully and willingly worship me through giving of your tithe, you will be blessed, maybe physically, maybe spiritually, I don't know, but you will be blessed in the eyes of God. I'm not sitting here giving you a false hope of prosperity. It reminds me of a, a story when I was a youth pastor. I may have told this, I don't know. A young man come in one Sunday morning to our youth class and we always had an offering plate set out on Sunday morning for Sunday school. And we were talking about tithing and generosity. And I said, yeah, if you give to the Lord, He'll multiply it back to you. He took it out of context. The next day, or that when I went to count the money to give to the to the person that collected, it was like 30 or 40 bucks. I forget how much in there. When you're in a youth class at Sunday school, that's a lot of money. Well, the next week, that same youth come in. I didn't know who would give it. He come in the next week. He was just mad at the world. I said, what is wrong with you? He said, you said last week if I would give to the Lord, he would multiply it and come back. I said, yeah, I did. He said, I give it $25, $30, whatever. He said, I didn't even get it, even get that back. And I need a new set of tires for my truck. If we give expecting God to give us those type of things, guess what? That's begrudgingly. That's not lovingly. That's not willingly. And that's not worship. But he give that expecting. I'm going to give that 30. I don't know if we sit by the mailbox all week just waiting for God to mail it to him or what. I don't know. Please don't take what I'm preaching this morning in no sense. Because let me tell you, my God is an awesome God. And he blesses us in ways. Let me tell you, God blessed me years ago in a way that I didn't know. So just recently it just it was dawned on me exactly what that was. I was 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old, and I was saved. And I didn't fully recognize that blessing until just a few years ago. What that blessing really was, I understood what it meant. But I didn't understand the fullness of that blessing. So the blessings that the Lord give you when you worship Him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, blessings 
He will share with us. That's what He tells us there in, in verse 10. Test me in this way, He says. So I challenge you this morning. Test God with your tithes. With a loving and willing heart. And see if He doesn't bless you. See if He doesn't bless you. You know what blesses me? When we got a line of kids here on Wednesday night waiting to get registered to come upstairs to learn. And they're dying to get upstairs. That's a blessing to me. And we can't do that without the church giving of tithes and offerings. We can't. We just can't do it. Again, there may be a ministry that you just think, I just don't want to support that ministry. I ask you to check your heart. Check your heart. I, I don't like the way that that leader of that ministry is acting. Check your heart. Because I tell you, there is not a ministry in our church right now that I'm aware of that is not making strides for the kingdom of heaven. My support. And I'm asking you to do the same thing this morning. If you can, would you stand with me this morning? And I want to pray for us this morning. As we go through this week, preparing our hearts next week for this offering. You said, boy, preacher, you're really pushing this offering. Yes, I am. Because this church ministry needs it. God don't need it. Boy, the church needs it. So if you would, bow your heads. Let me pray for us all this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the blessing of salvation. We thank you for the blessing of your grace. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of the finances that you give us each and every week, every day, every month. Lord, I pray that we would begin to search our hearts. That we would begin to dig deep into our hearts and sacrificially, Lord, give unto you. Lord, I pray that your blessings would overflow this church through the ministry efforts that we have here. Lord, and I pray that we never begrudgingly give. But Lord, I pray that it's always loving. Lord, I pray that we never hold back on our sacrificial giving because of our own opinions. I pray that we not hold back from our sacrificial worship unto you, whether it be the tithe of money or assets or whether it be our worship in song or whether it be our worship in attendance just because we don't agree with this or that. Lord, I pray that we be in agreement and in a relationship with you. So Lord, I pray now and give encouragement to each and every individual and household that's here today. Lord, so that they could encourage the ministry of this church through next week's efforts. It's your precious name I pray. Amen. As they lead us in worship, this altar is open. If there's something you need to bring and just lay it out here, I pray you do it. I pray nothing holds you back to be in that right relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't have that relationship with Him, I invite you this morning to come get to know the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let Him enter your heart, your mind, your very soul. Would you come this morning as they lead us in worship?
Thank you for listening today to Hartford Baptist Church. Again, we're located at 415 Liberty Street, Hartford, Kentucky. Services at 9 a.m. traditional, 1115 contemporary, with Blessed Academy at 1015. Nursery and Kingdom Kids available at 1115. If you would like to know more about our church, give us a call at 270-298-3701. Our office hours start Monday through Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Like us on Facebook or go to our website. Have a blessed day.